Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily broadcast. My name is Barry Selby, and I'll jump into a quick intro in case you don't know who I am and what I'm about. I am a best selling author, and I'll get to my book in a second actually, because this is relevant to my book, or I should say there's a chapter in my book relevant to this topic. Um, so I'm a best selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, and that's really what inspires these talks. These, are called, these talks every day, these are my daily Facebook Lives, called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. This is number 341. I'm getting, just, just realizing I'm going to done is like, whoa. Happens every time I think about it. It's like, that's a lot of broadcasts. And today's topic, actually, I'm referencing a chapter in my book because the one two days ago. And by the way, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, they're called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. This is number 341. And this one is the third around uh, red flags. And I'm change, I changed it from a red flag test, because that sounds cr crunchy to me. Is I call it a red, fly, red flag advisory. <laughs> you can take the advice or not, it's up to you. And this one is actually, it was a conversation I had last night with a friend of mine, um, and this topic came up about, um, you know, you swear you'll never date someone like that again. Again, as in you keep going back to the same thing. So that references a chapter in my book. And by the way, in book, if you haven't seen it before, it's 50 Ways to Love Your Lover. And you get it on my website, which is barryselby.com slash book or 50 ways to love your lover com with the number five zero. And it's chapter 31 that I'm going to talk about because that's relevant to this particular um, topic. And I'll get into that in a second. So the way I, I talk about it in the, in the chapter, and I'm using, just going to give you the introduction, which is lovers come and go. You are the constant in your relationships. Do your inner work and become the best you. And I'm going to explain what I mean by that. And... This is a personal experience of mine, <laughs> for sure. So, and I think I may have talked about this before, but I wanted to give you some insight and points about how, as much as you may, perhaps you do, I certainly did, think that I'll never do that again, and then you realize you've done it again and again and again, that maybe something needs to change and it isn't them that needs to change. You know, the, consist the, 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 um, the constant search for the right person, because every person you met so far keeps doing the same thing again and again and again, you may be looking the wrong way. You may want to look in the mirror. Because if you're noticing that every single person you date is the same, same things happen every time, the same results aren't what you want, the same problems show up, and the same issues, upsets, whatever it is, 99% of the time, it isn't actually them in the way. It's actually you. Because you're the one that's bringing that person into your life. Or I should say, each of these people into your life and they're actually um, living up to your expectation. Yes, they're living up to your expectation. Got you thinking, I hope. And this is the piece that I'll get into, actually I'll get into in that moment. We'll jump back a little bit. In my own experience, my own situation, and I've said this before, but I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna get, use it in this context, so at least you know from my own personal experience, I can relate to this. It's not something go, a theory like maybe I've heard about it or read about it, and I have studied it. That's because I was in the middle of it. And even after I studied it, I still made the mistake till I figured another piece of the puzzle out. So the scenario to explain how, or should I say the journey I had in my own relationships, especially the three ones I remember, I remember vividly, happened between 2003 and 2006. So it's over 12 years ago now, 11 years ago. And each time I was attracted to a very powerful, very dynamic, very attractive and very um, exciting woman. All three of them were. Um, in fact, the last one of the three asked me out. She took charge. She took over. And that was kind of the telltale sign that I didn't get until afterwards. So let's just say this thing about I'll never date something like that again. Again. For me, it was and again. <laughs> three times. And so you may be able to relate to this, mate. I hope you are, because this could be um, transformational for you to get this understanding. And I'll give you that answer in a moment. Let me just talk about the my own um, expression of the of the journey of the... Um, the before I understood part. <laughs> so all three of these relationships um, ended where they broke up with me. Um, the last one's much where she asked me out, which is setting up the stage for the biggest aha awakening and frustration at the same time. Because she didn't, the last one of the three, she didn't really, and I'm just checking my memory for me to see if I'm accurate on this or not before I say it, she didn't really provide a space for me to step in and take charge and lead and take her out. 
In fact, it became very easy to just be at her, her beck and call of her service in a way. And it was actually, it worked for us at the time. I was in a place of like, sure, no problem. And she was getting what she wanted. But then after several months, it really went downhill because what she was hoping for, which I didn't get because I was totally unaware at the time, is she wants a man to take charge, to be leadership, to be the macho man in a way, which I was never going to be. Because macho, macho, if you have heard my other broadcasts, is very different from masculine. And I talked about that, I've talked about that before on other broadcasts, but I may, I may explain it more here in a second to explain my, my transformation. So in my own journey, my own learning, I didn't get a clue <laughs> the first time it happened or the second time it happened. And it was after the third time it happened that I went, hmm, maybe it's something in here, not out there that's going on. So I did do the never going to do that again and again and again. So if you've done that yourself, you're not alone. <laughs> and I can tell you for a fact, having shared this with other people and worked with some several clients, many of my clients and many of my friends I've watched and talked about this have exactly the same experience under their belts where they're the same thing happened more than one time with different people and they figured out afterwards it was from them, not the other person. So for me, the evolution, just to give you that piece of my journey through because everyone's different, was I was choosing women that were in the masculine, but I didn't know that at the time, because I wasn't taking my masculine role in the relationship. And so I was actually looking for the opposite polarity in a way, because I was actually in more of a beta state, or a beta male, or even feminine in a way, because the work I was doing is very spiritual. Don't let the pink shirt fool you. That is not where I live anymore. That put me on a journey, which I'm very grateful for. So those three relationships, as much as they were painful at the time, I'm grateful looking back because if it hadn't been for those, I would never have followed the path I'm on now. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. I wouldn't have written my book. I wouldn't have done any of this stuff if I hadn't had that impetus and that um, shove into this journey. So there's, there's blessings in here too. So one of the pieces, just to fill in that piece about macho and masculine, was I was raised in a value system where ma macho was the choice for men that didn't work for me because they were putting down women um, had very short-sightedness and were very selfish. That's the way I saw it, and I didn't want to be part of that. I didn't know there's another role until much later, which is basically 2007. Well, there's another possibility to express, which is what I call the awakened masculine, which is a more, more embodiment of service of being driven by purpose and a way of caring for those around that is a place of generosity, not from a place of need, if that makes any sense. So that's why I understand the difference between macho and, as I call it, the awakened masculine. Now, to put it into context, you understand for your own journey. If you have had a relationship or 17 relationships where the same thing generally happened, the same result happened, the same experience you had in that relationship where you were having the same paradigm, that may have looked generally quite different, but one thing at least, if not many things, but one thing at least through each of the relationships, the same thread, the same theme, the same almost predictability that you had. It's like, this is going to happen. And it did, because you knew it because you've done it so many times. This is that, don't want to have it happen, but was going to have it anyway, because the paradigm was wired in such a way that until you change the wiring, it's going to keep running the same way as it did before. That's the way it is. And that is one of the biggest, I can say this, one of the biggest gaps in any and almost all matchmaking dating services, period, is that they don't take in the, the, the clients and the matchmakers and dating coaches, because I'm not one of those, don't take into account history and don't take into account the wiring that's installed, because this is the piece I'm going to get to. It's the wiring that's installed that repeats the same history again and again and again. So here, here's the explainer for that part. If you are, in fact, sick and tired and you're done, you had enough, you're not going to repeat the same thing again and again and again. You now know, I trust, that the solution, the answer, the change is inside of you, not somewhere out there. It's not the other people. And if you want a dating, dating app or a matchmaking site or a matchmaking service, that inner work isn't being done by them 99% of the time. Most of them do that. don't do that work. They just pay you up with somebody. So that change won't happen. And it doesn't matter what they'll match you with. This is the mystery and the majesty of the universe, the way it works, is you'll still be drawn to somebody, doesn't matter what person they line up with, will reciprocate those patterns you still don't want to deal with, because they're still coming up. 
I think that made sense. So just say this another way. If you don't do the work on the inside and the stuff that's been happening in the past doesn't work for you, it's like you've got to change the inner work because changing the outer work won't make a difference. So it doesn't matter if you do go see a matchmaker or use, use Tinder or Match.com or any other app or site. It doesn't matter who you pick. It does not matter who you pick. I can pretty much guarantee, based on the way the universe works, that that new person you pick will fall into the same groove, the same pattern, the same experience you did the last 10 relationships. Yeah, it's that um, predictable. If you don't want to do that, which I hope you don't, then I have a solution for you. Actually, I actually have several solutions for you, but I want to give this piece to, the, give this piece to you. Um, one of them is going to be reach out to me, just so you know ahead of time. I'm going to let you know ahead of time of that uh, seed I'm going to plant. But the truth is that until you are willing truly willing to do some self-reflection, some self-investigation, a true inner review of what drives you, what, what your wiring is, and what, what you've chosen to be as your paradigm for a relationship, which 99% of the times I talked before comes from your parents. Yes, you are dating your mother or your father. It happens. Until you're willing to make a difference and change that, it won't change. So that's where the work is is to do the rewiring and the transformation of those programs and those um, automatic pilot that's running that you don't know how to turn off. Because generally speaking, you won't. I didn't. I had to get help from outside, which is why I help other people do it for themselves. So that can happen one of a few ways. And one of the ways I recommend is with somebody helping you. Hello. <laughs> I mean, you can, there are people out there that do this work. That's why it's when you go see a therapist or you can go see a counselor. But if you're going to go to see a matchmaker, you may not get the help you need, just to be clear. And what I offer as my gift, which I talk about in all my broadcasts, is if you're looking for help and you're being um, clear that you're done with that paradigm, you want to change it, my offer to you of a complimentary clarity conversation, which is a free gift, a conversation for 30 minutes that you and I talk, is a no-brainer. It's a done deal. I know you want it because that's the next step to get you where you want to go. And in that time, we will talk and I will help you get some clarity of where you want to go. And if it seems lined up, if it seems lined up, not guaranteed, then I'll offer you what I know in my work that might support you in that. It might not. So just to be clear, I'm not pitching stuff here as a matter of course. It's only if it's a fit. And it's not a pitch anyway. It's an invitation, just to be clear. <laughs> Don't do sales. Um, so on my website, just a quick recap, um, which is barryselby.com, as I mentioned barryselby.com you can get my book which is if you go to click on the book link in the um, in the navigation bar or on the left hand side of the navigation bar is a let's chat um, button you can press click on that sign up the form and schedule time in my calendar if you want the book you can get that in soft cover like this or you can get it in ebook format on my website you can also get it on Amazon yes it's on Amazon um, however I don't particularly recommend the Kindle version I created it but I'm not very happy with it I haven't fixed it yet but the physical book is good, and so is the ebook. Um, I don't think there's anything else. I didn't see any questions, so I think we've got it covered. This hopefully gives you some insight and some wariness. Oh, by the way, this is my third red flag advisory. Um, I did one yesterday, which was 340, and one before that, which is 339, on two other red flags you might be want to be aware of. So I recommend you watch those broadcasts if you didn't see them. So that would have been Sundays and, and Mondays. And I talked about red flags in greater detail on Saturday um, as an overall topic, so I understand what red flags are about. So that's a little package I recommend you look at and have a review, and they're only about 10 minutes each, so they won't overload your schedule. And I hope this has been of value to you. Um, if you think this piece should be seen by other people, please share it out. Again, if you need help, reach out to me. If you have any questions about this topic, please put it in the comments below, and if it's on Facebook or YouTube, because it'll be there later, feel free, and I'll get back to you on that. Um, homework, homework, what should I provide? Well, here's, here's your homework. I've done this before, but I'll do this one. This, this, this will bear repeating. If you're curious about this topic, if you're having challenges in this area, or if you're not sure about your relationship history, this is where you get to journal, get to write down. And if I were you, I would make, write columns for each of your last three or four relationship partners. And in each column, write down pertinent characteristics, experiences, conversations, upsets, challenges, red flags, etc. And do that for each of them. And if you've got three or four of these, you're probably going to notice where there's some commonalities. 
and that will give you a clue what's in the way and what to do about it. So try that as a homework assignment. It will give you the opportunity to start looking at your own history with much more clarity. Okay, a couple of things. You might need Kleenex handy. And when you do this, please keep breathing. Because I know for some people, this is a scarier prospect to do this. So I hope this makes sense. Try it on. Give it a, give it a go and see what happens. Um, if you get stuck in it or if you get some more upset shows up or more concern shows up, reach out to me. Again, that's what I'm here for. Um, either message, message me over social media or you go to my website. Again, sign up for the discovery session. It's my gift to you. The complimentary clarity conversation. And I will help you with some clarity. Again, that's, and if you want to go the shortcut, it's barrysober.com forward slash chat. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the love. And thanks for being with me. I'll be back again tomorrow. Um, there may be another red flag advisory. I'm not sure. This is my third one. I only plan on doing one initially, but they keep showing up. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being with me. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.